Hello guys, let's begin with a new chapter, Natural Resources. Let's have a brief outline of the things that we'll be studying in this chapter. The first thing that we'll be studying is the introduction about this chapter, followed by the resource, air. We'll look at the role of atmosphere in climate control. We'll learn about winds, rain, and air pollution. The second resource that we'll be talking about will be water. And then we'll discuss about water pollution. The third resource is the soil. So we will learn about mineral riches in soil. Then we will learn about some biogeochemical cycles that are the water cycle, nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. And in the end, we will end this chapter with the topic ozone layer. So let's begin. Our planet Earth is the only one on which life as we know exists. Life on Earth is dependent on many factors. Most life forms we know need an ambient temperature, water and food to survive. The resources available on Earth and the energy from the sun are necessary to meet the basic requirements of all forms on the Earth. So what are these resources basically? These are the land, water and air. The outer crust of the Earth is called the lithosphere. Water covers about 75% of Earth's surface. It is also found underground. These comprise the hydrosphere. The air that covers the whole of the Earth like a blanket is called the atmosphere. Living things are found where these three exist. This life-supporting zone of the Earth where the atmosphere, hydrosphere and the lithosphere interact and make life possible is known as Biosphere. Living things constitute the biotic component of the biosphere. The air, the water and the soil form the non-living or also called the abiotic component of the biosphere. Our focus in this chapter is on the abiotic components of the biosphere that is the air, water and the soil. So moving forward let's first look at the air. Air is a mixture of many gases like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and water vapor. It is interesting to note that even the composition of air is the result of life on earth. Without this composition life will not be supported as in the case of other planets like Venus and Mars. They have atmosphere of primarily carbon dioxide and hence there is no life on these planets. Eukaryotic cells and many prokaryotic cells need oxygen to break down glucose molecules and get energy for their activities. This results in the production of carbon dioxide. Another process which results in the consumption of oxygen and the concomitant production of carbon dioxide is combustion. This includes not just human activities which burn fields to get energy but also forest fires which have natural causes. Despite this, the percentage of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is a mere fraction of percent because carbon dioxide is fixed in two ways. The first way is green plants convert carbon dioxide into glucose in the presence of sunlight. And the second is many marine animals use carbonates dissolved in sea water to make their shells. These carbonates dissolved in seawater are basically nothing but CO2 plus H2O which gives Ca, CO3. For example, we have calcium carbonate. So the carbonate that is present in water, the CO3 component comes from the reaction CO2 plus H2O. So now let's see the role of atmosphere in climate control. We know that air is a bad conductor of heat. The atmosphere keeps the average temperature of the earth fairly steady during the day and even during the course of whole year. The atmosphere prevents the sudden increase in temperature during the daylight hours. And during the night, it slows down the escape of heat into the outer space. Now let's think of the case of moon, which is about the same distance from sun as that the earth is. Despite the fact that both have the same distance from the sun, the surface of moon which has no atmosphere, the temperature ranges from minus 190 degrees centigrade to around 110 degrees centigrade. Therefore, we can see how important atmosphere is in climate control.
The next topic is the movement of air that are winds. Before moving forward, let's try to begin this topic with some questions. What causes the movement of air? What decides if the breeze is gentle or strong? These kinds of questions are there in everybody's mind. All these phenomena are the result of changes that take place in our atmosphere due, the, due to the heating of air and the formation of water vapor. Water vapor is formed due to the heating of water bodies and the activities of living organisms. If we try to look at some example of living organisms, we can relate it to our breathing. When we exhale air, we uh, exhale water vapor along with it. The atmosphere can be heated from below by the radiation that is reflected back or re-radiated by the land or water bodies. On being heated, convection currents are set up in air. When air is heated by radiation from the heated land or water, it rises. But since land gets heated faster than water because water has higher specific heat capacity, the air above land would also be heated faster than the air above water bodies. At night, both land and sea start to cool. Now since water cools a bit slower than the land, the air above water would be warmer than the air above land. So all the movements of the air resulting in diverse atmospheric phenomena are caused by uneven heating of the atmosphere in different regions of the earth. But various other factors also influence these winds. These factors are the rotation of earth and the presence of mountain ranges in the parts of the wind, etc. Now let's look at rain. When water bodies are heated during the day, a large amount of water evaporates and goes into the air. Some amount of water vapor also gets into the atmosphere because of various biological activities. This air also gets heated. The hot air rises up carrying the water vapor with it. Now as the air rises, it expands and cools. This cooling causes the water vapor in the air to condense in the form of tiny droplets. This condensation of water is facilitated if some particles could act as nucleus for these drops to form around. Normally dust and other suspended particles in air performs this function. Once the water droplets are formed, they grow bigger by the condensation of these water droplets. When the drops have grown big and heavy, they fall down in the form of rain. Sometimes. When the temperature of air is low enough, precipitation may occur in the form of snow, sleet or even hail. The picture here shows the satellitic image of cloud cover over India. Rainfall patterns are decided by the prevailing wind patterns. In large parts of India, rains are mostly brought by the southwest or the northeast monsoons. Having looked at the importance of air, now it is important to look about air pollution, which is of great concern nowadays. The fossil fuels like coal and petroleum contain small amounts of nitrogen and sulfur. When these fuels are burned, nitrogen and sulfur too are burned and this process produces different oxides of nitrogen and sulfur. Not only is the inhalation of these gases dangerous, they also dissolve in rain to give rise to acid rains. The com combustion of fossil fuels also increases the amount of suspended particles in air. These suspended particles could be unburned carbon particles or substances called hydrocarbons. Presence of high levels of these pollutants cause visibility to be lowered, especially in cold weather when water also condenses out of air. This is known as smog and is visible indication of air pollution. An increase in the content of these harmful substances in air is called the air pollution. Two of the most common sources of air pollution are the chimneys that produces the harmful gases as well as the automobile exhaust which has these harmful gases. Creatures like lichen are very sensitive to the changes in the concentration of sulfur dioxide and other pollutants in air. When you go to a busy road, you will see that near those busy roads, these lichens will, for, will be found very rarely. Hence we saw 
how important is atmosphere for our existence. We also saw how winds are created. And in the end, we had a brief introduction to air pollution which is of great concern today. With this, I end the first video on this chapter. Thank you.